morning. Welcome to Coast Street Baptist Church Service Online. My name is Alison and I'm one of the deacons at Coast Street and I really want to welcome you as you join us in worship this morning. Just to let you know what's going to be happening, we're going to be praising and worshipping our God through song and music. We're going to pray, we're going to listen to his word being read. Jess will be leading us in family time and also later we will be hearing from some of the people who in the past have attended Alpha and they want us to know just how much it means to them. At 11 o'clock on Facebook Live, Johnny, who is one of our ministers, will be bringing us God's word. We're starting a new service, a new series today and he will be talking about hospitality. As we draw together to worship God, I'm going to read from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So let us in our generation join in that praise. worship our God with gladness this morning as we sing praise to the Lord the Almighty praise to the Lord the Almighty the King of creation oh my soul praise him for he is your health and salvation come all who hear brothers and sisters draw near adoration Praise to the Lord Praise to the Lord above all things so mightily reigning Keeping us safe at His side and so gently sustaining Have you not seen all that has needed has been met by his gracious ordaining. Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord who shall prosper our work and defend us. Surely his goodness and mercy shall daily attend us. Or ponder anew what the Almighty can do, who with his love will befriend us. Hallelujah. To the King of all creation And the Lord of our salvation Hallelujah Hallelujah To the King of all creation And the Lord of our salvation Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord. Oh, let all that is in me adore Him. All that has life and breath, come now with praises before Him. Let the Amen 
sound from his people again gladly with praise we adore him To our God who does sustain us. Hallelujah to our creating, redeeming and sustaining God. God, we we come to worship you this morning with gladness, with joy in our hearts because you have made us and you've saved us and you're keeping us safe in your love today. May we know your spirit at work in our lives as we worship you this morning. Amen. Hi, everybody. Hello. It's lovely to see you all this morning. Hi. So we're going to start off with a quiz this morning, okay? So I hope you're feeling quizzical. Okay, are you ready? Can you guess what kind of animal I am? Okay, so the first clue is I like to spend my time out in fields. Second clue, I'm very soft and fluffy. Third clue, I'm mostly white, but sometimes I'm black. And your last clue, if you haven't already got it, is I sound like this. Bah! Bah! Did you guess what it is? Yeah, that's right. Well done. I'm a sheep. I'm a sheep this morning. Well done, everybody who got that. Now, Here's the tricky bit of this quiz. And this is one that grown-ups are going to be able to join in with as well. And you'll have to get your grown-up to help you with this. Okay. I'm going to give you 20 seconds, a 20-second countdown. And I want you to name five places in the Bible where sheep or shepherds are mentioned. And there are lots of sheep and shepherds in the Bible. So it's not as hard as it sounds. Okay. But you're going to have 20 seconds. Okay. Ready? Set, go. Okay, so did you manage it? Have you all got five places where sheep well, shepherds are mentioned in the Bible. Well done, everybody. That was brilliant. And actually, like I said before, sheep are mentioned a lot. In fact, sheep are the most mentioned animal in the whole of the Bible. And there are loads of Bible characters who own sheep or who look after sheep. Can you think of some like Moses looks after sheep? David looks after sheep before he becomes a king? And, you know, shepherds, is, being a shepherd is a very important job. Shepherds take really good care of their sheep. They take them to the best fields to eat and they take them to the best rivers to drink and they watch over them and they protect them from wild animals and, and from anything else that might hurt them. And if the sheep ever get lost, the shepherd goes out to find them and to bring them home again. Now, Jesus told a really famous story about a lost sheep, didn't he? About a shepherd and some wandering sheep. <laughs> and we're really lucky this morning because the lads from Wednesday Club I'm going to read it for you. So let's go over and hear and hear from them. So this is uh, Nick Butterworth and Mick Inkpen's telling of the lost sheep. Here is a farmer. He has a hundred sheep. He has counted them. One of his sheep is missing. Oh dear, where has it gone? 
Is it in the hen house? No. Is it behind the haystack? No. Is it under the hedge? No. Is it the last? All day the farmer looks for his sheep. He climbs up hills and he scrambles over rocks. He crawls through bramble bushes. The thorns scratch him. But he will not give up. He is tired and hungry. His feet ache. But he will not give up. At last the farmer sees his sheep. It has fallen in the river. The farmer dives into the water. Splosh. He rescues the sheep. Hooray! The farmer has found his sheep. Let's all have a party. Jesus says God is like the farmer. He loves us like the farmer loves his sheep. Thank you guys, that was awesome reading, thanks. <laughs> so shepherds really care for their sheep. The Bible says that God loves us in just the same way. He's our good shepherd. He promises to provide everything that we need and whatever silly things that we might do, he'll always love us and never ever let us go. Let's hear from Thoughts to Make Your Heart Sing by Sally Lloyd-Jones. This is called Helpless. What animal does the Bible say 400 times that people are most like? Oh dear, it's sheep. Sheep aren't clever at all. They're foolish. For instance, sometimes they just topple over and can't get themselves back up again. They just lie there. And they are constantly falling off cliffs or going to unsafe places and getting stuck or eating poisonous things, or getting hurt, or running off and getting lost, or not finding their way home again, even if their fold is in plain sight. So you see, sheep are really completely helpless on their own, and they desperately need a shepherd. And God says that we are helpless on our own too, and we desperately need a shepherd, which is why he gave us Jesus. Let's pray everybody. Let's put our hands together and close our eyes. Father God, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you sent Jesus to be our shepherd, to walk with us in all that we do. Lord, thank you that you give us all that we need. Lord, remind us that you are with us and that we can trust you even when we're very confused and we don't know what's going on. Lord, help us to remember that we're in your hands. Amen. So I shall see you all next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. The Alpha course was great for me because even though I'd been brought up in a Christian family, it was my first chance to ask the questions myself, the, the big questions, and uh, make my own mind up on the answers too. And the answers I got uh, changed my life. And uh, for that reason, I'd encourage everybody to uh, give the Alpha course a go, especially now online where you can do it in your own front room with uh, your friends and your family right there with you. So what can we say about Alpha? Alpha is absolutely amazing. Uh, fellowship with people, getting to know each other, uh, asking questions that you wouldn't normally ask on a day-to-day -day basis maybe, but also important, getting closer to God and knowing what he wants us to do with ourselves. And what not. All right, well, uh, I suppose you've, I'm just saying hello to you because I've, I've been struggling to. Are you? Okay, all the best. Get, get on the Alpha course.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, I'm here with some of the boys from uh, our church football team. I'm here with Math and, and Harry and Tom, and, and we're just going to talk very briefly now a little bit about the club, uh, what's happening now, and, and kind of what's happening for the future. So good to ha good to be with you, boys. Yeah, good, good to be here. Yeah. Um, Tom, uh, for those that don't know, tell us a little bit about um, K Street Football Club and when it started, where it's come to today. Well, it started over 10 years ago when it was basically lads at the back of the football hall at, at church wanting to play a bit more than that and wanting to perhaps join a, a proper league uh, with 11 aside and it was actually Daniel Bauer, uh, his brainchild, I think in about 2009 and his idea was to try and get as many lads from church and as many of their friends to try and um, create a team so we could play in a Christian league he knew of other teams doing similar things and he brought his nous and um, sort of his ability to get things done and um, managed to form us uh, as a club, which we started playing, I think our first game might have been at BRGS. And then we went on to play uh, a few more friendlies before joining the South Manchester and Cheshire League. And we've been in that league ever since. Um, but we've also formed a second team. So we have K Street Baptist FC and K Street Baptist United and they've been going for I think about seven years as well so it's a, a great chance for us uh, all to play football together as a church but also to to include lads uh, wider and further afield. Right Math why why do you think a church like K Street should have a football club what's the heart and vision behind this? Well I think that um, it's a great way to sort of reach out to um, to a group of guys and uh, and like share friendship and fellowship with them we've we've become great friends with with most of the lads and you know thinking about it i mean tom and harry will correct me if i'm wrong but we must have we must have made contact with over what 50 60 lads tom is it do you think it's more than that i don't yeah, know i think I think it could be pushing 100 now yeah yeah it might well be of lads who've come and um and played football either you know the matches or training um and also beyond that, you know, reaching out to their families as well. So um, it's a great way to, like I say, share friendship and fellowship, but sometimes when appropriate um, to share the gospel. Um, you know, I, I think it's important we don't bombard them with it, but also we don't, we also don't want to like hide who we are and who we serve and everything and what the club represents. So um, it is a, it is a church team. So we want them to know about Jesus and, and you know, that, that that's who we serve and that's what, what, the church you know is about as well and um and yeah and so we've, we've tried to make it so that the church can can become more involved with the team and also the team come more involved in the church and you know that's something we're continually looking at and definitely there are things we can improve on that front and you know it's our great heart that the um that the lads would become more a part of the church and and that they would come to know um, Jesus for themselves. Great. I can see you're all wearing a uniform today. I'm feeling a bit left out. <laughs> Wishing I could uh, be good enough to uh, to don the shirt, but but maybe one day. <laughs> you, you'll get one one day, Johnny. Don't you worry. <laughs> Harry, uh, what's happening with the league at the minute uh, and the club, and uh, uh, during this lockdown time? And where do you see the future going? Um, well, it's the south. Manchester and Cheshire Christian Football League that we're in and that's an official FA affiliated league so for that reason we're kind of waiting for official guidance from the government to filter down to the FA because it's grassroots football that we're playing and um, so we're waiting for sort of the nod from them so basically there's, there's a lot of us lads waiting and um, waiting in the wings but also at the same time everyone at the club kind of understands why we're waiting um, we understand like the gravity of the situation and although we'd like to get back playing soon we understand why we've got to uh, just play this waiting game at the moment until the time's right but 
in the meantime, I think, you know, there's a whole squad of lads who are really missing their football. Um, they're kind of weekly exercise, they're, they're weekly trip out um, and playing football together. And that, that is something that I think a lot of the lads and us included will be missing, uh, that regular exercise and that chance to be together. Um, and we've been missing football, of course, but since like the Premier League and the Championship are uh, viewable on telly at the moment, that's giving us a, a, a bit of um, something to, to enjoy at the moment. But yeah, at the same time, as although we're a football club, we're now, and like the lads have said, up to 100 of us over the time. At the moment, we've probably got a squad of about between 30 and 40. And we're all regularly in touch because first and foremost, really, we're, we're friends now. Um, really, really close. We see each other. We're used to seeing each other so often that we're all in touch. Um, might be on, you know, like messenger service, like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp like that. Constantly in touch. Um, and we've also, you know, been doing fun things like quizzes and doing a, a few things on social media and interviews on YouTube um, with some of the lads, just so that we're we're in touch and we're sticking together through it. And we've, you know, we've talked to the lads about the situation and we've, you know, offered uh, our practical help during lockdown and uh, obviously the offer of prayer and things like that. We've put that out there um, so that they know they can, even though the, we're without the football, we're still with the club and uh, the club is still there for them, uh, sort of representing the church and all the services that a church would offer them. Um, but yeah, it's a case of just waiting. And I think when the wait's finally over, we'll be hungrier and more ready than ever to, to kick a ball and see each other and have a laugh again. And just, just to, like I say, playing and laughing alongside each other is something that probably, if we're honest, is what we've missed more than anything, just seeing each other. So that will be the the, uh, the main main delights when we all see each other definitely. Oh great! I mean, I, I'm not the footballer I used to be, but um, even I'm yearning to get out and, and have a kick about and have some fun and expend some energy, like I guess you all are. Um, it's amazing to think there's such a big community here uh, that's part of the church that we don't necessarily see on a Sunday morning, but that is actively involved week by week and. Uh, we want to remember you guys uh, as, a, as a church community uh, and, and pray for you and yeah get involved in any way that we can and, and, and I hope to be more involved going forward. Uh, I practiced a bit over the summer with you guys and I, yeah <laughs> I've lost a yard or two but you know uh, uh, enjoy playing. We all have yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, it'd be great to pray for you now and for the club and for all, all the, the guys and the families involved is, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, definitely. great. Cheers, Father. We thank you so much uh, that we can uh, that we can move and and find life and uh, just enjoy football so much that that it is a gift from you uh, because you give us the ability to to enjoy life in all its fullness. And Lord, we pray for um, the football club now in this time, this difficult time when we can't play and uh, where where we can't do the normal things we'd like to do. God, we pray that you'd um, you'd come and, and just inspire us and give us uh, energy and new ideas for, for the way to do things going from now and into the future. A lot of pray that you bless uh, Math and Harry and Tom here uh, as they seek their best to serve the club. And we pray, God, uh, for anybody who wants to know more about you. We pray for anybody who is struggling at the moment and just needs that spiritual lift as much as the physical and emotional that we're, we're all experiencing at the minute. God, would you be present uh, in their lives today? And may they know that we are here as a supportive community uh, to, to bless them and to support them through this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Amen. Um, My faith had grown quite weak, really. But when I did the Alpha course, it reawakened my faith and it reaffirmed everything that I knew I believed. Uh, the first Alpha course I went on was uh, before we moved here, the local parish church organised, uh, we had the, the meal and the film and then we had the discussion. I enjoyed the discussion because you had various views about the Bible and so on uh, and I enjoy these things because it, it, uh, in the end it strengthens my faith find out why I believe. And then uh, when I, we came here, 
uh, I helped with the alpha courses that they run here. Uh, and again, we had different discussions, different people with different points of view. Uh, and I like that because uh, what you can say at our church, uh, uh, whatever you believe, they respect your views. Alpha is a great chance to ask those big questions and to discuss things in a really safe and relaxed environment. And it's an opportunity to strengthen existing friendships and make some new ones as well. So I'd really encourage everyone to, uh, to think about signing up. This morning's reading is from Acts 10, verses 1 to 5. Peter and Cornelius. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, who was the captain of a group of soldiers called the Italian Unit. Cornelius was a very religious man. He worshipped God, and so did everyone else who lived in his house. He had given a lot of of money to the poor and was always praying to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, Cornelius had a vision. He saw an angel from God coming to him and calling him by name. Cornelius was surprised and stirred at the angel. Then he asked, what is this all about? The angel answered, God has heard your prayers and knows about your gifts to the poor. Now send some men to Joppa for a man named Simon Peter. Oh, my days.
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Lord God, we come before you recognising that you created this world, and when you had finished, it was good. Yet, now when we look at this world, we see only a fallen world. Throughout this world, we see disease, famine, natural disasters, the works of evil and of sin. We struggle to fully understand how it all fits together as your single good creation. We ask ourselves where specific events like pandemics fit. Why natural disasters and the sin of mankind happen? Lord God, you loved your creation so much that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to save it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We confess our sins before you, recognising that Jesus is the Saviour of the world. We pray that wherever your gospel is preached, people will be saved from their sin and promote good and godly works. We pray that you will strengthen those who are working to mitigate the effects of the current pandemic and famine, natural and man-made disasters. God, forgive our pollution of your world. May all your people be blessed as they proclaim salvation is come. Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour. As the God who created the world and all that is in it, yet you can bring personal comfort to all those who are bereaved, healing to the sick, changing lives and giving freedom from sin and oppression. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for this once perfect world that is now fallen, and only in you alone salvation can be found. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our democratic government and we pray for true knowledge and wisdom to prevail as we are led out of lockdown and as the government strikes trade deals, supports the needy, finances new infrastructure, law and order, national institutions and debt. Help us as a nation to honour you, for you have said, I will honour those who honour me. Perhaps we do get the government that we deserve, so help us to please you in all that we do and say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who are known to us who are sick at this time. We pray, Lord, that your healing hand will be upon them and that they will know your peace. We pray also for the doctors and nurses who are caring for them, that you will give them wisdom and help them to know how to treat them in the best possible way. We pray for those who have been recently bereaved. We pray, Lord, that you will draw close to them and help them to know your presence and comfort at this difficult time. We pray especially for Yvonne, as she mourns the loss of Gordon and deals with her own health issues. We pray that you will be, be a comfort to her and her family at this time. Amen. Father, we pray for Matt and for Johnny and for the deacons. And as they guide the church out of lockdown, we pray that they may be able to discern where you are leading and be able to follow and to lead us deeper into you and more active and involved in our witness in the community and amongst our family and friends. Give us the courage, Lord, to share your faith with those with whom we come into contact. And Father, we pray for church leaders throughout Rossendale, throughout the UK and throughout the world, that they may again be able to hear what you are saying to the church and may be able to obey. And Lord, we pray that through this we may be all drawn closer into you, become more like Jesus and more willing and equipped to share the faith of your gospel through our family and friends and communities. For your glory, Lord. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us this morning for our Sunday morning worship. Don't forget to tune back in at 11 a.m. on Facebook Live when I'll be bringing a message this morning as we start a new series on hospitality. But as we finish this time together now, here's a blessing. As you go, know this. In grace you were created. In mercy you have been sustained. And in love you will be held forever. Amen. Come and worship our God with gladness this morning as we sing praise to the Lord the Almighty. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him for He is your health and salvation. Come all who hear, brothers and sisters, draw near. Him in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord above all things so mightily reigning, keeping us safe at His side and so gently sustaining. Well, have you not seen all that has needed has been met by His gracious ordaining. Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord who shall prosper our work and defend us. Surely His goodness and mercy shall daily attend us. We'll ponder anew what the Almighty can do, who with His love will befriend us. Hallelujah. To the King of all creation and the Lord of our salvation. Hallelujah.